Welcome to Silicon Valley Innovation Forum, Innovation Dialogue between the US and Asia. I'm Diana Dean. Uh, I'm going to be the moderator for this panel today. This event is presented by Silicon Valley Innovation Channel, Ding Ding TV, and the Monty Jade Science and Technology Association of Shenzhen. And we would like to also thank to the Ministry of Economic Affairs of Taiwan. And we want to thank to Mr. Pravin Gupta uh, for the help and support for this event. This event is also going to live stream on Ding Ding TV YouTube channel. So we also have audience on YouTube channel and Facebook. 2020 had a very difficult start and the COVID-19 pandemic fundamentally changed how we live and work, but pandemic could not stop innovation. We created this platform, gathered Asian and American industry leaders, entrepreneurs, investors, and think tanks. We'll exchange the innovative minds and ideas, discuss how to best foster, protect, and advance innovation in business world. So today we're gonna to have three panel discussions. And uh, first one will be the artificial intelligence in e-commerce. Uh, the panel discussion will be 25 minutes for each discussion. And the last five minutes will give uh, the speakers a time for interaction. So you can ask questions, uh, interact with one another. So first of all, let's welcome the moderator for the first panel, Artificial Intelligence in e-commerce, Professor Carl Sterling. Carl Sterling is an entrepreneur and data science specialist at San Francisco Bay Area. He has ex extensive experience in delivering innovation, creating self-sustaining companies and establishing business partnerships. He has a deep understanding of data-driven business strategy and the leads development and strategy planning for startups, as well as companies focusing on transformative innovations. He's also a lecturer at the School of Informatic and Computing, Indiana University. So I'm gonna invite our moderator, Carl Sterling, and he will invite the speakers of his panel. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Professor Sterling. Thanks, Diana. Well, I think we are all ready to get started here. And um, quite frankly, I don't think there's been um, a year with more challenges and more change than 2020, and we're all living through it. So I'd like to kind of uh, go ahead and introduce our panel members. Um, and the first thing we'd like to do is, since we don't have much time, is go right to the questions. I think, uh, are the all the panel members here now, Diana? Yes. I okay. think so. Yes, okay. they are all, they're all here. Great. So I think the first thing might be if each of you could tell us a little bit about what do you think have been the biggest challenges for uh, online e-commerce that your company can help with and uh, just briefly introduce yourself with a couple of words first. Ro, you want to start? Sure. Hey, everyone. Um, super excited to be here. Um, I'm Rahul Chabukswar. I'm the founder and the CEO of Homesum. Homesum is an e-commerce platform for uh, grocery stores. Um, we enable offline to online transition for all kinds of grocery businesses. Uh, our range from a couple of thousand square feet um, neighborhood stores all the way up to 100,000 square feet um, supermarkets all across the US. And uh, we use AI primarily to uh, onboard the grocery stores quickly in in two weeks. Um, so even if you are a hundred thousand square feet grocery store and carry like thirty to forty thousand items in your store, uh, we are able to leverage AI to determine what's in your store at this point. Um, so um, quick onboarding and um, dealing with out of stock items and inventory sinking, um, those are the challenges we primarily use AI for. Um, and and that's a little bit about our company and and how we are helping 
some of the grocery stores navigate this difficult time of COVID-19 and, and allowing them to offer their customers uh, online ordering, curbside pickup and home delivery. Okay, and James, would you like to go next? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And uh, okay, hey, everyone, I'm James from Yajang Tech, uh, and uh, we are located in Taiwan. And uh, everybody know uh, 2020 is a very special year, and uh, everything is changed. So uh, we are we are focused on the AR, and uh, we are a kernel engine design, and uh, it's a solution provider. So we have some AR and uh, VR solution for our uh, retail client. And um, uh, uh, sorry, but. But uh, uh, about myself, we, are, we, are, we have some engineer and uh, sorry, we have some solutions for AR and VR for retail and uh, factory. And uh, 2019, we have some business uh, for uh, retail because we, uh, everybody cannot go outside to buy, the, buy something, but so, so everything, everyone, and this, they, they will try to shop in online and uh, using some special tools to, to buy the, for the need. So I'm thinking that uh, the, the AR and the VR will be more popular in, in the future, yeah. Brandon, you wanna quickly introduce yourself as well? Yes, hello. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on the panel. I'm, a, I'm a very honored by, by that. Uh, Payment Love is my company. Uh, what we do is uh, we enable payments in just about any way possible. Um, so that does include uh, org organizations that would engage in VR, AR. Uh, it also includes online commerce, as well as on the retail end of things. And uh, we're able to actually leverage AI in a variety of ways that includes things like chatbots and that type of thing. Um, and there's some interesting statistics about how that uh, acceptance of chatbots and things like that have grown over the last year. Um, people simply just don't care anymore. They just want the answer and chatbots are great for that. But uh, we work in all types of commerce, basically omni-channel. And uh, so retail stores, while they've been waning and having difficulty in accepting payments and, and so on, on the, uh, the end of online commerce, the only challenges there really have been supply chain uh, bottlenecks. Um, other than that, they're going like gangbusters and that's most of our business has, has transferred to online uh, opportunities as well. Good. Well, thank you for those introductions, everybody. I think, you know, it's gotten to the point where I don't know what the future holds anymore. And it uh, sounds like you guys have had to uh, come in and help stores that traditionally may not have even thought about an online strategy to get online or create some kind of a retail experience in the virtual world. As you look forward, what do you think is the next big change we're going to see? Rahul, you want to give that a shot? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, we we in the grocery space, I think um, grocery space got sort of like a um, um, like a like a wake up call when Amazon bought Whole Foods a uh, couple of years back, and then everybody sort of started thinking about their online strategy. Um, so that that was a little bit of a wake up call for all the grocery stores. Uh, but obviously, I think uh, if you think about traditional um, e-commerce or in groceries, particularly, I'm, I'm exclusively focusing on grocery because that's my area of expertise. Uh, but um, but if you think about groceries, like uh, traditionally, like about revenue that was attributed to online channel was about four to five percent. Uh, pandemic has completely changed the game on that. Like now, 30, 40 percent of your revenue is coming from e-commerce. Um, so. Um, that's, but the but the, if you look at the e-commerce experience, it's kind of optimal. Like if you order something on Amazon.com, um, you will get it on the day that it's supposed to arrive. Uh, nobody from the Amazon warehouse is calling you. Hey, I don't have Lenovo laptop in stock. Can I get you Dell? You know, <laughs> nobody's doing that. But when you order groceries for delivery, almost always there is a call from the shopper saying, "Hey, I don't have this brand of milk in the store. Can I get you this?" and or something like that. And that's kind of like a turnoff for a lot of grocery um, shoppers who who choose to go online because they're kind of forced to go online due to like they, because they are at high or they don't want to um, risk going to the stores and so on and so forth. Um, so I think that is that is going to have to significantly change, and that's going to be the key in in um, really making this sticky. 
Um, so how do we make sure that when people order something, they get all of that without having to interfere with um, with their through their daily activities like having phone calls, having communication with copper. Um, so that's next. Um, I think I think a big part of like what we do and and how we leverage AI today and and machine learning today. Um, that's going to be the the focus for a lot of most of the e-commerce, grocery e-commerce industry going forward. So in kind of predicting what people are going to need and making sure it's available or having options that you don't have to call people for. Is that what you're right. Saying? Yeah. Um, so, so if you today call Whole Foods, like there are probably like handful of grocers across the U.S. who keep the count of inventory, uh, what's in their store. Like you call Whole Foods and ask them, hey, do you have uh, your baby yogurt? The response from the other side is, uh, hold on. And they go check the cooler and, and tell you like, if they have it in stock or not. Um, and that's okay. the problem. Well, that makes sense. James, what about you? Okay, I'm thinking that uh, e-commerce is very, um, it, it is already popular in Taiwan, but uh, this year it's more, uh, many people use the, uh, maybe they were shopping online and use it because people cannot go outside to find something. So I'm thinking the AR and the VR technology can help to help and speed up people to shopping online to try the maybe like our, our solution. We have some solution to doing the AR glasses try on. So people they are using the tools to uh, try the AR glasses on maybe maybe he he stay at home and try the AR glasses on at home. Then he can choose quite like and uh, maybe like the, the red glasses maybe like the yeah. Places, he can try on his cell phone or on the PC. So I, I think uh, I think the e-commerce is uh, make uh, uh, e-commerce with the AR or VR technology can help the, the e-commerce speed up. Yeah. So more about trial and evaluation of potential purchases. Brandon, what about you? Yeah, I have to agree with uh, both Rahul and, and James. Uh, I think you know in the, in the way that Rahul is uh, speaking, the um, you know getting that real-time inventory level is really, really critical. And uh, it's taking AI and it's going to take probably quantum computing to be able to manage all of the data ultimately. But uh, the AI factor and, and to James's point, you know, being able to hold it in your hand or feel like you're holding, see, have it appear like it's, it's in front of you, that's very important. Um, people still want that first person experience. But uh, if I, you know, looking forward, what if I had a crystal ball, which I don't, but if I had to guess, which is what I'm going to do, uh, I would say it's going to be much, much more of the same. Expectations are changing. Um, you know, the expectation is, as was mentioned earlier, for instance, with Amazon, um, when I order it, I want it now. I want to know when it's going to be delivered at my door. And this isn't just the millennials calling for this. Uh, Kyle, people like uh, that are our age, people like you and I, are ha had expectation now that you know I, I've ordered it. It said it was going to be here. I want it now, and so meeting that expectation and making sure the supply chains are in in, in full effect, full force, um, and then being able to manage the customer experience. Um, you know that is melding all of these technologies together and creating what is truly uh, truly an omni-channel experience is is really what the future is about. Okay, so thanks, Brandon. I do think that it's changed everybody's experience. I know that when I'm actually physically in the grocery store, I'm surrounded by Instacart people, and that's a different experience um, for everybody. Um, what do you think about uh, brand uh, loyalty in this type of uh, purchasing environment or e-commerce environment. So we've heard a little bit, Rahul said, people are having to think about alternative brands. I also think that some people are just following brands and making decisions uh, on uh, purchase decisions based on the brand name less than price or some other things. But what do you guys think about that, Rahul? Yeah, I think, um social media is definitely playing a big role in that. Um, I think a lot of brands um, are uh, trying to play on the, um, making a play on the um, social aspects, a um, lot, of, lot of emotional aspects uh, versus the actual what, what it does. Um, so like, like for Coca-Cola, for example, 
like delivering happiness, uh, right? Um, so that's just an example, but that's how I think a lot of people are, a lot of brands are marketing themselves. I think one thing that is another factor that is playing key role in purchasing that we are seeing across all the online shoppers behaviors is that um, uh, there are there are a lot of more and more shoppers these days who are like thinking about the social economic and um, and the and the environmental impact of things. Um, so things like seventh generation, um, which was considered as an expensive brand few years back. Um, which was like no chemicals, no uh, artificial um, uh, artificial ingredients, uh, all natural ingredients. Like like that was considered a premium brand, but now it's pretty much considered a common brand. And and if you look at the other other um, CPG brands like PNG, they have the product lines which are now catering to the to the audience who are going after seven generation and so on and so forth. So I think it's um, social media and and the and the social as well as the environmental impact is playing a big factor in people's decision. Uh, that's what we are seeing. Thanks, Raul. How about James? What do you think about this? Uh, the dynamics of branding in this uh, new world we're all in. James, drop. I don't see him. Brandon, you want to go ahead and take that and tell? Yeah, see absolutely. Um, I think that you know there's kind of a there's kind of a conflict. Um, so we have the you know on the one hand people like brands. I like certain brands myself, but if I need it now and I can get a good substitute for that, I'm typically going to be okay for that uh, or, or okay with that. Um, so I think it kind of depends, and it, and it um, you know as we look forward and we we a lot of this is we're talking about AI. Uh, it's about how good is your AI. How good is your AI engine? Is it good enough to provide a good substitute that's going to meet the needs, meet the specifications of the buyer? And if so, getting that in front of the buyer instead of they go to the, you know, and I'll use Amazon as an example because they're kind of the gorilla right now. But you go to the Amazon page and the product that you put in your cart is no longer available. And now you get a bunch of substitutes and, and Amazon's AI is pretty good. It's not perfect but it's pretty good and it gets the things in front of you that you want to see. And, you know, you do a quick evaluation, the tighter they can make that and the quicker that you can make that decision, the quicker they can get you off that brand and get you onto something else that's going to fulfill the basic need. So I, I think branding is, it's important, but it's also about to some degree availability. Um, you know, I, I think the, the nowness of it um, can supersede that in some cases. Okay. Well, and, and I also, I also wonder sometimes um, what's going to happen to physical retail and uh, what, what is going to be the transition there. Um, we're going through in the Bay area now, a renewed lockdown. So we kind of have this uh, different phase of limited online to, to, to all online to mixed environment and I think, uh, what, what do you guys think is going to happen to physical retail? Ro? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good question. Um, the way I think about it is, um, I think the, um, there, are, there are two kinds of behaviors that I usually see um, in, 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 in retail shoppers. One, the kind of uh, shopping that they like to do and that they're motivated to do. Um, so if you think about like um, you're going to go and uh, buy, buy a suit for somebody's wedding or, or a tuxedo or, or a dress, like, you know, um, then, then, then you're going to want to do that shopping. You don't want to like do the guesswork and, and, and do that online. Um, another case, case is where um, you actually have like, a, um, like you are doing a shopping for a cultural event or something like that. So you take your entire family and you go for shopping. And, and that's the second kind of trip that people want to take. I think there will be a more and more pronounced um, uh, distinction between the trip that you want to take and the trip that you don't want to take, but you need the stuff. And I think the, the second category will all move slowly towards e-commerce. And, and people will just be like, like, for example, like if you if you're buying like a body wash or a deodorant, like, you know, you know, there's nothing like you have been using the same brand of stuff for years and years. So you just get it from Amazon or you get it from some e-commerce website where which will deliver you to the fastest and, and at a reasonable price. 
Um, so that's that's how I think. I think retail stores are here to stay. Um, you are um, you are going to always have the trips that you're going to want to take. Um, and I think the 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 primary thing for the retail stores is is um, is uh, what is the wow factor? What is the service that you're providing that separates you? Or, or sets you apart from your competition. Um, so every grocery store that we talk to these days, um, they are always talking about what's my differentiator. Nobody talks about like I'm competing with price, you know, because that's a slippery slope. You you are gonna hit a wall somewhere at some point. So I think everybody is is concerned about what's my differentiator, what why people come to my store, and and that's the kind of thing I think that will keep taking people to the retail store and and the trips that you don't want to take will continue to be online. That's how I think it is. Hey, so uh, Brandon, what do you say? Well, I think uh, that was very insightful, Rahul. Um, I, I think that that's probably very true, uh, but I'm gonna fall back to what I said back in the 1990s uh, when I spoke at an event for the, the new, a, a newspaper convention. Um, and that is basically calling for the downfall of retail. Um, you know, and that is, uh, I agree in some respect, there are trips that you're going to want to make. And I think luxury brands and things like that, they will remain strong. Uh, but I think that, you know, general, um, I mean, we just have to look around, you know, I was actually just doing a quick search online to see electronic stores, but like the Best Buys, the, you know, those types of things. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to find an electronic store right, right now. Um, and that's because some of it's due to closures and things like that, but some of it's going to going to continue. And I, and I think that the overall future really is in online commerce. And, you know, and I have to, you know, coming back to our, our main focal point here, AR, VR and, and e-commerce, omni-channel, those things are critically important for any business moving forward. You either participate in a part of that or you're going to be left behind. So, you know, that's, I mean, even LV and, 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 you know, all the top brands, they still have online commerce. They don't rely only on the, the retail stores, even though that's a great strength for them. And I think if you don't jump on the bandwagon, it's going to be a, a bad, you know, or a sad scenario uh, for retail. So it's kind of like if you snooze, you lose, right? Yeah. Well, I think we're just about at the uh, end of our time. Maybe we have a minute or two to open to questions. Is that all right, Diana? You guys can open questions for the speakers to interact with one another. If they want to ask each other questions, uh, they can do so at this time. You still okay, got five, you... five minutes. You got five minutes. Go okay, ahead. thank you. Did James, did James make it back? I guess not. Well, I think that um, you guys have pointed out two important things. One, that there will still be some shopping, but it's going to be very limited. And it's going to be special occasion or some kind of social uh, group decision that maybe gets people to go to an in-store environment. And um, I'm not sure, um, what other things should we be thinking about that we haven't mentioned so far? Rahul? I think it's the... Um... The biggest thing um, that that we we think about at Homesum and and we hear from the customers is is the experience and and I go back to the point of like um, you ordering something and you're not receiving part of the order like you order ten items and you only get seven and and uh, or like you know somebody's constantly bugging you or the text message or phone call do you want this do you want that I don't have this I don't have that. Um, I think that's the frustration out of all this e-commerce, grocery e-commerce, that we're going to have to think more critically as like the larger and larger percentage of the people start using this day in and day out. And if we really want to make it a habit, um, I, I think it's going to need, it's going to need for companies like Homesum. And I mean, Homesum is a, is a small participant today. We want to be like a large participant in e-commerce, uh, grocery e-commerce. But I think all the companies will have to significantly change how all these things are handled. Um, that's how I think. Things. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard for new independent products to get into the system too. Um, Brandon, what what thoughts do you have that we haven't covered? 
Uh, the only thing that I was thinking of is the, the aspect of marketing uh, relating to AI. So we haven't really talked about that. And I think that that is going to continue to be, uh, whether it's AR or VR or if it's traditional uh, online e-commerce, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see more and more of that, more ads that follow you, more, um, you know, recommendations and, and things that uh, just get it in front of you more and more frequently. Um, That's kind of scary. It is. It is. I mean, it's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, on, on the one side, it's great because it's going to be directed towards your needs. But on the other side, it can be invasive. I mean, if you look at movies like, uh, um, you know, uh, the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mars, um, I don't remember what it was called. Total Recall. Uh, Total Recall, yeah. And Minority Report. I mean, those were cases where, can you imagine somebody walking down the street next to you on a screen on a window saying, hey, hey, hey. Hey, have you looked at this? You know, Brandon, you know, using your name, personally addressing you. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's a, there's some huge downside, but um, you know, in the long run, that's the direction we're headed. And that's the reality that we probably will go through. It's just a matter of managing that and making it workable for everyone. Yeah. I think it might work for the retailers, but I don't know that it works for the customers. And I don't know if they will uh, put up with it forever. I mean, right now it's difficult not to, you know, you have two choices, take it or leave it, right? Yeah, well, we've think, seen technology um, changes that have cut out like the pop-ups and, and things like that. So, you know, there are ways of managing it and it's going to have to be managed one way or another. Um, I'm not at all agreeing or calling for it. I'm just saying it's probably going to be what happens. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I think we reached some. Hey guys, I've had my hand up for a couple minutes. Um, oh, sorry, didn't see it. It's all oh, right. Yeah. I have, have other questions. Yeah, go ahead, Heather. Yeah. I, I'm Heather Durham. I produce a local TV show. We're on 20 stations in the Bay Area and SU Tags. And I'm one of those people that do like to shop in person. And, you know, of course, now I'm being forced to shop online. And a lot of my chef friends that, you know, do food, they prefer to go to the farmer's market. So how do you envision, you know, yeah, Whole Foods, sometimes it's a hit or miss. And I've done some shopping with Safeway and they substitute, you know, online now. And, um, but I do prefer like on the weekends to go to the farmer's market along with a lot of my chef friends. How do you think that's going to pan out in the future? I think the chef friends are all going to be out of business because all the restaurants are going to close. <laughs> well, it's there's, there's one of the private things chefs too. That, private you know, and I'm, yeah. I'm sad yeah. about that. And I think it's a, I think it's going to be kind of unfortunate, but there's a lot of stresses on those types of uh, venues. Um, a farmer's markets, they're kind of closed in the winters, but there's a couple of them still open. And I see they're pretty yeah. vibrant and a lot of people at the ones that are remaining. Um, they have to reconfigure and uh, do their own accommodations. But um, yeah, it'd be really interesting. Brandon, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's it comes down to accepting how your customer wants to pay. Um, so as far as online commerce is concerned, relating to a farmer's market, I don't see a real connection there. Um, that is a, that's an in-person thing. It's an experiential, it's a quality thing. Um, and I, you know, I prefer to eat organic food myself and I, you know, I definitely support local markets. And, um, <laughs> but uh, from the aspect of um, you know being able to do the transaction, it's about having a device, you know, what whatever type of device it is that you can you know swipe a credit card or use a phone on or whatever the case may be to make it more convenient. That's going to be important for uh, for any business moving forward. Rahul, yeah, I think the farmer markets, farmers market, or or places like that, which are providing like a specialized. Um, um, unique experience i think i i strongly believe that they are here to stay um the i think the payments is the big aspect that i that i expect to change and i hope it changes soon uh because every time like i go to the farmers market like um if i have to like pay with cash at some merchants then it's cumbersome experience so i think that's the aspect i i think it will change the quickest because I think there are a lot of companies who are doing innovation, including Brandon's company in the payment space. So, um, so I think that is the first thing that will change. I think the second thing I expect, um, I was actually surprised that that it hasn't caught on so much, is that I think um, like which vendors are coming to the farmers market, um, what they are selling, um, um, why like 
what is their background and so on and so forth. I think there's a story behind all that, right? When you go and when you visit a farm, a stall that 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 belongs to a farm, um, I think that part is still like like you don't know what's going on unless you go to the like the Sunny Wales Farmer Market website and which vendors are there. Um, I think that will have to be that information transfer will have to be like much more organic, much more fluid, um, so that it gets people excited about this. Um, I think it's it's. Um, I think it would be pretty sad if if farmer farmers market go away, but I hope that they will stay. Well, and I was talking about the bigger picture, not just farmers market, but like instead of shopping at Whole Foods online, going and actually shopping. You know, I prefer to go and shop in person when I can for my groceries, right? Because you don't know what's going to show up at your door. And so I was looking, I was talking more about the bigger picture, not just farmers market, but. I the whole yeah, food I, I shopping think, experience yeah. and the whole ecosystem there, if that's going to severely change now after the COVID-19, if we're going to see big will. change. I think that the percentage of um, people who go, like, I think if you look at it, like now COVID pretty much made it mandatory for a lot of people to order online. Like if I had asked you last year, like, would you ever order groceries online? Your answer would be hell no. Uh, but, but you tried it this year. Now what that made is like, I think, if 10 people tried it, which they never thought they would, five of them would stick around and say that it's not that bad. I'm okay with it. And I save like an hour out of my day. Um, so, so I think that's what will happen. So um, more and more shopping will be, will be moving to online. Um, you will see like a lot of places, like we already seen like many grocery stores who are doing like um, similar concept like ghost kitchen. So they just have warehouses. They don't have physical locations anywhere in the city but they are just doing the delivery out of the warehouses um, because they have customers there and they are following there. Um, so that, that part is, is something new that, that COVID did. Um, but I think there will still be grocery stores and, and people who will go to those grocery stores. There will be people who will be like, I prefer to shop for my fruits myself. I know exactly the kind of apples I like to pick and I'm going to pick them myself. I'm going to take the time. Um, the percentage of the people who will do that will be less, but they will still be there. And as a result of that, what you will, as the business owners or the grocery store managers will have to do is they will really have to make sure that they are customizing the experience and optimizing the experience for people who are walking through the door. Otherwise, that number will continue to decline. Um, okay. Um, well, guys, thanks very much, friends, for the questions and your insights. I think we're truly in a brave new world of uh, shopping experiences here. And I don't think anybody quite knows how it's going to turn out, but I really appreciate you sharing your insights. Um, Diana, you want to pick back up here? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. And thank you so much for the wonderful moderator uh, for this panel. And thanks to our speakers, Rahul, James, Brandon, thank you very much.